Hello everyone, welcome to Break in the Huddle. Obviously, I'm not in my office uh, because of travel schedule that uh, I'm gonna have to record this for you to see uh, this coming Tuesday. But all is good and uh, I love where I stand, uh, where I'm standing, we have our tent up in the air and we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of chairs set up. Uh, just last night, uh, Brother Justin Duplantis was here, just packed the place out and just had such an awesome time in the Lord. And so let's have a good time right here. I hope and pray that you have enjoyed these last couple of weeks as we've been talking about, you know, great tools for God. In the last couple of weeks, we've talked about our conduct. And let me just read the scripture here real quick. Our base scripture here is in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. New Living Translation says this way, Above all, there's two good words right there, self-explanatory. Above all, this is the way we should conduct ourselves and think. Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven. Number one, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news of Jesus Christ. That means representing him. Goes on to say, then whether I come and see you again or only hear about you, I will know that you are standing together. That was our second uh, uh, point here. With one spirit and one purpose, fighting together for the faith, which is the good news. Amen. That's what we're talking about here. Pretty much it's the four C's, conduct, consistency, cooperation, and courage. The four C's, it kind of had a lot to do. That's the way my report card looked, if, uh, if I tell the truth. If it was, on, it, you know, but I, now I always made an A in PE, so don't, don't, don't uh, cut me short there. But hey, today, here's what we're talking about. We're going to talk about, let me get this together here. Our third priority is cooperation. How important is that? Break down status, status established in order of joint operation. That means everybody coming together or action. Philippians 127C, it says this, fighting together for the faith, which is the good news. Hebrews says this in 1025, forsake not and let us not neglect working together, cooperation. All in this one scripture, Philippians 1, verse 27. Let us not neglect, okay? That means forsake our meeting together. If you could see here, I don't know if you could pan real quick while I'm talking, that'd be just fine. If you can't, you don't have to do that. But we have hundreds of chairs and all these inmates come out. They're not made to come out. They get to come out on their own. We don't make anybody come to our service. And I have to say, they spoil me. They're all such awesome. They pay attention. They respect us. They realize all the effort that we put into this, all the effort from the administration, how they allow us to do all this. Uh, TDCJ is just the best of the best and letting us do what God has called us to do. So this third priority this week, breaking the huddle is cooperation, fighting together for the faith. It says, let us not neglect <clears throat> our meeting together. What we are doing now is a must. We're all coming together, encour encouraging one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing. Cooperation together should be a must in all of our hearts. Perfect example. Look at Washington today. Our country is a mess. You got one side that hates the other side and it doesn't matter what you do or you say, the other side is gonna say just the opposite. But yet the Bible is crystal clear 
that if a house is divided, it cannot stand. Working together is a great tool for the kingdom of God. Amen. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says this. Solomon is speaking. <clears throat> they are strength. There is strength in numbers. Two people are better than one, for they can help each other in every way. And so, if you want to be a tool for God, you've got to understand that it's not just about you. Our first priority was our conduct. How do we act? How do we represent Him? I always say this, that body language speaks louder than anything you can say verbally. I'll be honest with you, I just walked in the gate here. Quite a number of inmates getting to go home. That's a wonderful thing. Two of the dudes, they got their clothes on now, and their pants are way below their butt. And I pulled them over. I said, what's up? And they both told me, this is who we are. And I just, I said, how sad, because that's not getting you anywhere. And so if you don't conduct yourself, well, you might, you're judging. No, I'm not. It's common sense. You're doing it the way the world wants you to do it instead of standing up for what's right and conducting yourself the way that you should do. It carries over into the other tools of God, consistency. You can't just be a follower of Christ when you're in church, when things are good. You can't just come out underneath this tent and get a bar of soap and not change. And have, You have to be consistent in God's Word. And then this week is cooperation. In other words, becoming a person that other people like. It doesn't have to be just your way, Mike Barber. Uh, you can work together playing in the NFL for 10 years. I had to know what my tackle was going to do. I had to know what my guard was going to do. We had to work together. If I got to the line of scrimmage and I did what I wanted to do, I'm not going to do any good for the team. And bottom line, my butt's going to be on the bench before you know it, if I can say it that way. It's working together. Working together is a great tool for the kingdom of God. And that's what God wants you to do in your everyday life. And so conduct, consistency, and cooperation, these are three of the four tools that are very pivotal in living a godly life. Today, this is what we're talking about from breaking the huddle. I pray that you enjoyed it. God bless you. Thank you for coming, sitting down with me on this particular week here. Let your family know, your friends know. They can tune in every Tuesday, just like you're doing, 12.30 p.m. Central Time every Tuesday. And I can come to you and hope, coach you up, make you feel good about yourself. Know that the Mike Barber Ministries, we love you. And where I'm standing here in all these chairs, so many of you are a major part of that is because you not only pray for us, you bless us with a gift, and we couldn't do it without that. It's a no-brainer. There's no need in passing an offering plate in my congregation. Uh, it's absolutely useless, and so it takes special people like you that understand what we do and why we do it for the kingdom of God. So in the name of Jesus, my conduct is going to be what it's supposed to be. I'm going to be consistent with it. And I will cooperate with the Word of God and with those around me. And I will be a blessing. I will be a compliment uh, in everything that I do. Hey, we love you. God bless you. Uh, today on Breaking the Huddle, I'll see you next week.